Hello everyone! Now, if you are here, you must be interested in seeing this mousetrap car. That or YouTube Autoplay just did you a favor. Now, this is not any ordinary mousetrap car, as my teacher gave us a very unique twist on this classic challenge. See, the final car must be a four-wheel drive. That challenge, combined with the fact that we are all at home and in quarantine right now, is going to make this interesting. So stick around to see what we come up with. The first and main objective of the car is that it must compete in two events. One where we compete to go the farthest distance, and the other to see whose car can go the fastest. Now, if you've been following along on screen here, you can tell that there's some pretty high stakes here. So there's a lot to talk about today. Let's get right into it. I am going to build my car out of three main components. First, let's get some mouse traps. I'm going to use CD wheels as well since they're readily available and that'll go over nicely. And lastly, for basically everything else, chassis, gearing, and all the rest, we're going to use Lego. Before designing anything, right from the get-go, I knew I want to make a car that is somehow competent at both challenges. The way I'm going to do this is through interchangeable gears, but we'll talk about all of that later. A mousetrap car is fairly simple after all, so I really just took basic principles and expanded them to fit this challenge's need. This car contains three stages of power transfer and reduction. The lever arm and spool, the gear reduction from the spool, and the method to drive all the wheels of the car. While I would love to keep using CAD as it presents nicely, if we're going to talk about how you should go about building this for yourself, let's flip to filming the actual car. So let's start by discussing the lever arm and spool, and in doing that string. You can see here we just have four zip ties mounting the erector mechano beam onto our two traps. We were allowed two for this project just to make things interesting. And these holes in it are actually quite nice as I can just loop the string through them and effectively change the mechanical advantage of the car. So that actually made it really configurable for the distance and speed competitions. One thing that's definitely done improperly with this car is you'll notice that the beam is twisted and not flat. To be fair, twisted is better than flat because if you had a beam that was pretty much just parallel to the ground, it's going to bend a lot easier under force than if it was perpendicular. If you're building yourself, I recommend making this perpendicular. That just takes some time and messing around with the zip ties. The reason I didn't have this beam perpendicular to the ground like it should have been is because I had to have it clear these gears down here which act for four-wheel drive. And lastly for the string, I just have this nice little loop that I tied in the end, which hooks over that black pin. And then to wind it, all I have to do is, once I have it looped, I just have to start turning. The wheels will be spinning, so it's nice to hold the car in the air. And lastly, you want to make sure you're lifting the lever arm simultaneously, so if something fails, it doesn't spring back and basically explode your car. The next stage in the car is simply a gear train running down from the spool to the mechanism that will drive all four wheels. And this was designed so I could just interchange the gears pretty quickly to achieve different ratios. However, I really wound up doing that with the lever arm as mentioned earlier. And because these gears meshed poorly and created friction, this ratio was too great. So no matter which way I flipped it, I couldn't get desired performance. And then these were really the only set that were left and they worked with a one-to-one -one ratio. That left me just changing everything on the arm. Here we can see the car turned upside down and we're gonna take a look at the power transfer device for all four wheels. This is the third and final stage of power transfer. And since I elected to have both mouse traps power one spool in the rear of the car for simplicity, I then had to somehow transfer power up to the front. Instead of gear trains, belts, or any of those other ideas I came up with, I elected simply using two knob gears meshing at either end to reduce friction and keep everything nice, simple, and light. Also, note that before using knob gears, I had selected to use this variation of Lego gear instead. These function nicely as 90 degree angle gears, and I was able to dual purpose one of them so that way it could also be driven from the spool. However, that did not quite work out as I found these gears to have pretty poor power transfer when they are not perpendicular. Alright, so now that we've pretty much gone over all there is to go over in the car in terms of power transfer, I would discuss the chassis, however, in the interest of keeping this video short, and assuming that you guys know how to use Lego, we're not going to do that. Key things to note are that using a Lego Bionic health bar dial and a single, I don't know, hubcap piece from a lot of Lego Star Wars sets, you can make a very nice way to sandwich a CD in and then add some hot glue and you're all set for the wheels. 
in terms of attaching the mouse traps, we just have two quarter inch wood screws going into each one. Lastly, in terms of improvements, you can remove all metal except the mechano arm on the traps, and you could maybe try Swiss cheesing basically every part of the car from the wheels to the mouse traps themselves. I was considering drilling out the CDs to make them lighter and reduce rotational inertia. However, I wasn't quite sure if they were fracture, and seeing as I didn't want to burn through 100 CDs learning, I didn't do that. Anyway, that's basically it on how the car functions, but let's go see if it actually works. All right, let's do the distance competition first. It's going, it's going pretty strong actually, and it looks like I'm out of space. Seeing as I can't leave my house because of quarantine, and I need to figure out how far this car will go somehow, I just did some math, feel free to stop and read it, and it turns out this car should go about 23.86 meters. That distance wasn't half bad with what I had on hand, so I'm okay with it. Now I just need to get set up for the speed competition. Let's move my dog, set up the car, and looks like we're ready to go. The car went 4 meters in 116 frames with a 30 frames per second camera, so that works out to about 3.87 seconds to go the full 4 meters. Once again, not perfect, but decent. That leaves our final stats at 23.86 meters traveled for distance, and 3.87 seconds to go 4 meters. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. It was really fun to make and put together during this quarantine. As always, stay safe out there, wash your hands, and have a good one.